Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name's Rob and today we're going to look at 10 enhancements for SOLIDWORKS 2020 that are in my opinion underrated. So this list is in no particular order and that's because these enhancements might help some people out more than others but do let me know in the comments which one of these was your favorite or if I didn't mention one which one is your favorite and why. And so the first one I'll start off with is, is a really simple one. So in front of me, I have SOLIDWORKS 2020. Um, you may notice that in the open menus and really any file explorer menu that the file type list actually has been reordered. So let me show you. So in SOLIDWORKS 2020, if I do control O for open and then go into my uh, file list, you can see that in the top of the list are all the SOLIDWORKS files, but then after that, all the file types are in alphabetical order. And then at the very end is just all files. So SOLIDWORKS files at the very top, um, then everything else in alphabetical order, and then all files. And um, I think that'll make it very great for new users of SOLIDWORKS to really uh, get in the hang of things. I know it took me a little while, so there's a list there, and I have SOLIDWORKS 2019 to compare it to. So if I hit Control O over here, and I see the list here. You could see that some SOLIDWORKS files are at the top, but then, yeah, it's just all kind of shuffle around. I assume that's like the order of implementation. You know, they added, I think JT files are pretty recent, so that's at the very bottom, but it wasn't helping anybody, so I'm really glad that they reordered it. So you may be wondering what this parrot is all about. That's gonna be a topic for a future video, so if you haven't already, hit subscribe and hit the bell so you actually know when my video comes out. For right now, I wanna focus on all the features that comprise this parrot. You can see there's a good handful and it's a bit unorganized, and we have a way to deal with that, and that's with folders. But there's a fundamental limitation, and that is, well, I can select multiple things to go into one folder, so I can right click, you know, box select, right click, and say add to new folder, and that's totally fine. But the problem is adding to this folder. See, it doesn't wanna let me do it for some reason. So what you would have to do is actually delete the folder and then re-add with the entire selection that you want, which, you know, hardly seems very efficient. So thankfully they've rectified this in SOLIDWORKS 2020. So if I go back to SOLIDWORKS 2020 and get my parrot, there's this one right here. Yep, so if I just get some of them, add that to a folder, but then I, figure out that I want these in the folder as well. Then I can grab this and, you know, just pop it in the folder. You can even select multiple, pop that in the folder. There you go, it's all there. So this is definitely a welcome enhancement and one that I'll be using. And for number three, and this is a feature that I think should have been in SOLIDWORKS a long time ago, but at any rate, I'm glad to have it now. Um, whenever you needed to add a material, and let's do that here. So I'm in SOLIDWORKS 2019 again, edit material. And let's say I want to add aluminum bronze. The problem is, where is that in this list? You just kind of have to know, you know, by someone telling you or searching for it, that aluminum bronze is actually found under copper alloys. And that's no good. And it's not very, you know, new user friendly. So I'm really glad that they changed this. So if I go back to SOLIDWORKS 2020 over here, here we go, if I go into my edit material, hey, hey, we have a search bar and it works wonderfully. So aluminum, aluminum bronze. And I can hit apply, close, and our parrot is now made of bronze apparently. And there you go, yet another feature that I'm happy to see added. So this next feature I think is gonna be a game changer for some of you, and it involves a feature that I don't use very much because it's not that flexible as of, as of the old versions. So let me show you what that is. So if I want to save a selection, you can actually do that in all versions of SOLIDWORKS. So you can see up here, I have this selection set saved, and that allows me to pick that for multiple features or if I wanna apply colors, you know, multiple times in multiple configurations or something like that. I don't have to go and select those three faces every single time, and it's pretty great, but it's got one major downfall, and that is there's really no way to add to the list in the old versions of SOLIDWORKS. So if I right click, all it says is remove selection set. So not very flexible here, but here, so I'll show you how to create one. So if I right click, 
the faces I want, right click, features, save, selection. And that'll appear up here under selection set, but no way to add to this until SOLIDWORKS 2020. So let's take a look at it here. So let's see if I have a selection set. Okay, I have a selection set. And as you can see, it's got a handful of faces in there already. If I wanna add to my selection set, I can just start selecting my faces. So go over here, maybe select a couple of these, right click, and you'll notice that the save selection, instead of just being a button, it's now a pop-out menu where you can assign it to a new selection set or you can add it to the existing selection set. So I'll do that. And now my singular selection set here has nine items in it. So I think I'm gonna definitely make more use of this feature now because you know this was pretty limiting before, but now it's really, really flexible. And that's exciting. All right, and for this one, I think this will make plenty of people happy, but you know, personally hasn't really bothered me in the past, but I see a lot of people um, take problems with the fact that SOLIDWORKS uses the Y axis as by default as its up direction, whereas many other softwares use Z as the up axis. Um, I haven't run into that many problems with it. You know, when I'm 3D printing, I might have to rotate something by 90 degrees. Not a big deal, but uh, for people that, you know, really took issue with that, you know, we may finally have a solution. So with this parrot, if I go and hit my space bar and I go over here, you can see you can now select the up axis, whether you want that to be um, in the Y direction or in the Z direction. One caveat with that though, and you'll see when I apply that, is that now my parrot is sideways. And that's because it just reassigns the cardinal directions. It doesn't re-evaluate any of your sketches or anything like that. So you could take care of this by, you know, rotating the sketches or specifying a move copy body and just specifying that rotation. But what I would use it for is I would probably set up a new template with a Z axis as the up if I do a lot of 3D printing, for example and just make that the standard going forward. But, you know, it's pretty nice that, you know, they have the 3D printing community in mind when they add these features. Okay, so for this next one, I'm gonna head back into 2019 and we actually need to open up the drawing. So right click and I prepared us a, a drawing here. Yeah, just a very basic, just got one view on it. But the thing is, if I wanted to change the view scale of this, um, I can access this view's properties or I can go down here to change the sheet scale. The problem is this scale wasn't very customizable. Actually, it's not customizable at all. And, and what I mean by that is this specific pop-out list. You could of course go to sheet properties and then you type in whatever number you want. But what I was getting at is that um, with people that use architectural scales a lot, you know, one to eight, one to 16, one to 32, things of that nature, well, that's not in this list. It's just engineering scales strictly. In 2020, we we're able to uh, change that. Let me go back to 2020 over here. Get my drawing. There's my parrot. He's taking a little nap. But if I go into my list here, you know, I can still change it to whatever I want. Have it update. But you notice I have 1 to 15 on this list, which is not really a standard scale in any regard. So how do you get these custom scales in there? Well, these values are stored in a text file in the system location. So if I open up this Explorer window that I have here, you can see that I'm in my program file, SOLIDWORKS Corp 2020, SOLIDWORKS Lang, English, and the file you're looking for is drawing scales. And depending on how you install SOLIDWORKS, this might not be the same path for you. It might be SOLIDWORKS Corp with no year and then SOLIDWORKS and then Lang English if it's the only installation. But what I recommend is um, uh, Search Everything is a great tool to have on your computer. It's not a SOLIDWORKS product at all, but it's something that I end up using a lot. So if you type in drawing scales, yeah, you can see you can locate the file right here. And what you do, you just go in the text file and you just type in whatever list you want. Now it lists the limitations of this. For example, you can't have more than 20 ratios. And I think that's totally fine. I wouldn't need more than that. But yeah, there's the one to 15. I type that in there. But yeah, just type in whatever you want in there, restart SOLIDWORKS and you'll be good to go.
And now for this one, I'm gonna bring out Luma here. And the way I'll demonstrate this new thing is I will launch my offset surface command. So this one is an enhancement to offset surface. I'll say 10 millimeters as a distance. And I'm just gonna go ahead and give it uh, my selections. And here's me using my selection set. So if I click that, you see it's populating in my list. I don't have to go hunt for anything. And what this is, is basically all the surfaces in the body. And um, as you can see with this particular distance, we have a lot of surfaces that are intersecting each other. So this, um, as specified, will not complete as a feature. It's gonna throw an error. But the difference is with this enhancement, you can actually proceed with a command anyway and choose if you want to exclude the failed faces. So what I'll do here is I'll just hit OK and I'll just let that turn for a bit. So as you can see, after turning for a while, it wasn't able to complete the request as I specified and I expected this. There's no way that that intersection is gonna fly there. But instead of just saying, hey, it failed, reselect things and try again and you just gotta guess which ones are gonna fail, it actually identifies the failing faces, puts them in red here and then gives you the option to just remove them. And that's what I'll do here. So if I just remove them, SolidWorks will do all that it can. And there you go. You got Luma in a bowl kind of thing with a little headband there. And then I can use manual surfacing techniques to kind of specify what I want. I think this will make a lot of industrial designers happy. So this next one I'm pretty excited about because it'll actually change the way we do flow simulation. So for flow simulation, a quantity that we need is the frontal area of the object that we're analyzing. So you may recall Simeon here. He was from the aerodynamics of a cat video. So one of the quantities I needed is the frontal area. That is basically a shadow when I look at him from the front like this. That's kind of difficult to compute manually. So SOLIDWORKS 2020 actually gives an easier way of doing that. Let me show you. So for example, if I copy another plane like this, and you don't have to do this step, it's just to make it easier to see for the video. And on this plane, I will sketch. And I'm gonna to go to my convert entities, but I'm gonna hit the arrow underneath. And you'll see that we have a new option here called silhouette entities. This works just like convert entities, except you, know, you can select multiple bodies just like this, hit okay. And there you go, you get the entire outline of the cat. So if I look down on it, there you go, it's a perfect outline. And then I can make a planar surface just like that. So there's, it's basically a shadow. And evaluate measure, click on the surface, and there it gives me the area. And now I can use that in my calculations for flow simulation, or if you're just doing hand calculations, this quantity will be very useful. Okay, so for this ninth one, I'm gonna show you what this tool does, and then I'm gonna show you what I think it could be useful for. So I got my little sample model here. I'm gonna go ahead and copy a surface real quick. So if I get offset, set that to zero, and for example, select this one. And I'm gonna go hide the solid bodies just so we can look at our surface. There we go. And when you have a surface like this, you can thicken it and just kind of assign a thickness. But before, you could only thicken in the normal direction. So you'll see that if I hit OK without specifying anything else, that these edges here are slanted like that. And that's because it takes the normal direction of the surface, attempts to make this 90 degrees pretty much. But in 2020, you can actually specify a direction. So if I go back here, and now there's this pink box, that's what's new. And I say, put the top plane in there. And there you go, it's thickened in that direction. And you can see this thing is pretty much completely vertical. So that's cool and all, but what might this be useful for? So one way I think this will be useful is in a case like this, where this remote control has a lip and groove. And this is actually generated by the lip and groove feature. But I think we can use the directionality of the offset tool to do something similar. So what I mean is um, if we can find a shape just like this 
and then perhaps cut it into the other half, you can do that. But to make that initial um, kind of like wall shape, what it can do is I'll hide that away. Um, we need to go ahead and copy the surface. So I'll do that here. Set that to zero. Select this. Go ahead and thicken this. So thicken that surface. Say maybe two millimeters. And for the direction, I can say along the top plane. So that'll keep the draft consistent. So I'll uncheck merge results so I can deal with it on its own. And then I can perhaps do a move face and go ahead and select some of these. There we go, except that's far too much and the wrong direction. Okay, so you have something like that. And I can go ahead and show the lower housing. And there you can see the startings of a lip and groove done without the lip and groove command. So I think it could be useful in this regard. And now for this last one, this is gonna make a lot of people happy, especially those who work with multi bodies and then assemblies. Here I have a single part file that has an exploded view. You may know for the longest time, we were not able to reuse those exploded views in assemblies. And here I can show you. So if I go to file, make assembly from part, and now if I go into the configuration manager, yeah, it doesn't show up here and nor can I bring that in. There's no option here to bring in those steps. But let's go to 2020 and see what the situation is there. Same trash can. And yeah, here's the explode, so choose to explode or collapse it, assembly. And now I can go to the configuration manager and say new exploded view. And now if I select the multi-body part, there's this new button here that says for part, from part. Hit okay. And now you have that in here. See, brought it right in. So I really enjoyed making this video because SOLIDWORKS 2020 did get a lot of great features like C3 continuity and flexible parts, to name a few. And with all these enhancements that I discussed in these videos, plus the other ones that they discussed, I think that makes SOLIDWORKS 2020 a really strong release for this year. Thanks for watching, and if there's something that I didn't talk about you want me to talk about, put it down in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.